And um, why is this important to holding on to an atmosphere? It's because when you have um, you have some gas in your atmosphere and all of the molecules of gas, each individually have some specific speed that's set by their temperature. So to illustrate that, I'm gonna show you this simulation from FET. So um, here's my um, collection of um, you know, gases. So I have some chamber here. I can add heat or cold to it if I want to. And I can also open or close this door. And what I'll see here is a histogram. So a number of particles with their speed um, and the average speed of those particles. And I can choose to either insert this larger, more massive blue molecule or this lighter, um, less massive red molecule. So let me just go ahead and inject the same amount of each of those gases into my chamber here. And as I do that, um, the first thing to notice is how does the average speed of the light molecule compare to the average speed of the heavy molecule? Yep, the smaller one is going faster. So on average, if I have a lighter molecule, then it can zip around faster if it's at the same temperature as the other gas. And what is it that sets the temperature of our planet um, if we don't consider an atmosphere? Sure, the sun. So if you're closer to the sun, then your planet is going to be warmer, will have a higher equilibrium temperature than a planet far from the sun. So that means that this, you know, the amount of energy that my particles have to zip around with depends on how close to the sun it is. So if I insert some heat into that system, maybe I'm making this more similar to Mercury than to Earth, or maybe more similar to Venus than to Earth, then all of my molecules are able to move with a higher average speed. So there's a, a, a higher average speed for all these molecules. And some of them, if they're moving in the right direction and it's possible for them to escape, then indeed they do escape, right? And your atmosphere is doing this right now, the t uh, molecules at the top of the Earth's atmosphere that are moving with a high enough speed, uh, the escape velocity, are able to escape the atmosphere. And the ones that have a lower um, average speed, they can't escape. So they eventually fall back in. Um, I'm pretty sure that this simulation doesn't have a gravity as part of it. So it's not a very good simulation for atmospheric retention, but it kind of illustrates the point that your molecules can drift away if they happen to be moving in the right direction with the right speed. Which of these is escape most probable for? So I'm seeing for the most part B that the lighter molecules would be more likely to escape. Um, this is exactly right. They're on average moving faster, and so they're more likely to reach escape velocity than the uh, slower average speed molecules. Okay, um, what about this? Is escape more probable for a given molecule at a given temperature on a less massive planet or a more massive planet? Um, a less massive planet, escape speed is lower when you have less mass. And so if you have a less massive planet, lower gravity, it just takes less speed to escape. Um, given, let's say that we have two objects that are the same mass, um, which is, is escape more probable on? The cooler or the hotter object? The, the um, hotter the planet is, then the faster on average those molecules were, will move. And so the more likely it will be that some of them will reach escape velocity. Uh, depending, of course, on the planet's mass and radius. Let me show you one other thing. So there's kind of, I mean, a rule of thumb to figuring out whether or not a planet or a, retains an atmosphere or not. And that is if the escape speed of the planet based on its mass and radius is less than six times the average speed of the molecules, then most of the molecules escape. So we're going to use this rule of thumb and I'll let you think about like think that through because it, it's a little bit of a brain twister. Um, but I want to show you this um, simulator from University of Nebraska. So what I've done here is I made a atmosphere containing 30% hydrogen, 30% helium, and 30% nitrogen. So let's just say that those are the kind of initial gases that were present in the atmosphere. Um, and let's set the temperature to 300 Kelvin. So this is the temperature, surface temperature of Earth. And then the escape speed, well, this is the equilibrium temperature of Earth, the escape speed of 1120 meters per second, this is actually the escape speed of Earth and will allow the gases to escape from the chamber. And this shows us the number of particles and their speed. 
So here we see um, nitrogen is the heavier molecule, and so it has more uh, molecules moving at slow speeds, whereas hydrogen is lighter and helium is the very lightest. So more of its uh, molecules are moving fast. We're, we're going to be able to watch these plots, the number of plots, evolve over time. And so here's planet Earth. And our hydrogen and helium leaks away into space. But the nitrogen is heavy enough that most of the molecules do not reach escape speed. So escape speed is way over here with this dashed line. And since most of the nitrogen molecules are slower than escape speed, then we hang on to the nitrogen in our atmosphere. This is good news. Um, and also heavier um, molecules such as oxygen, we also retain. So let me go ahead and stop this and uh, reset all of my gases. Let's say that the, the moon's equilibrium temperature, because of its distance from the sun, let's say that it's roughly the same as Earth, but its escape velocity is a lot slower. So the escape velocity of the moon is something like 238 meters per second. And so now let's see if the moon started out with a similar atmosphere as Earth, and we just let it go over time, what will happen? since it has a much lower escape speed, more of those molecules are moving faster than the escape speed and the atmosphere leaks away. So the moon is just simply not massive enough to hang on to an atmosphere containing nitrogen. Okay, so that's the graphical way I wanted to share about how to think about atmospheric retention.